You can really build super powerful automations and AI agents with NRN if you know how to use it. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you the basics of NRN so you can build your own personal assistant. The first thing that you're gonna have to do is going into nrn.io and then you're gonna have to create a free account. You're gonna have 14 days completely free for you to try with also free API credits, which is gonna be amazing to build our AI agent. And then you're gonna select this plus button in here and you're gonna create a new workflow. You most likely will have also this personal, so you will just create it in there. Now, once you select that, you're gonna have, as you've seen in here, a blank canvas, right? So something that I want to mention beforehand, you are gonna need a trigger and then an action. So those workflows, the main thing is when something happens, right, that's gonna be the trigger, then something is gonna take place. That is gonna be the action. So the trigger can be, for example, a chat inside of NRN, an input, right? Then the action is gonna be, well, if I'm saying send an email to my friend, that's gonna be the trigger, the chat, and then the action will, is gonna be to actually send that email. And it can be many different triggers. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna go with the basic one, which is the chat inside of NRN, but it can be uh, creating a Google form. When somebody fills a Google form, you can, for example, the action will be uh, we are going to send in a high message on email or you're going to get a Slack notification. That will be the action. But the trigger will be the user filling out a Google form. But for this case, we are going to add a first step, which is the trigger, and we are going to add on chat message. This is already by default, so you don't really have to touch anything in there. So what this is going to allow us is to actually test our agents by having a chat inside of NRM. Okay. And this can be, for example, in the, in the future, it can be instead of a chat inside of here, a WhatsApp message, right? You send a WhatsApp message, like your assistant, and then the action will be to do whatever else. But in this case, we're just going to go with the simplest, which is open chat inside of here. So I'm going to open the chat in here to actually test it out. Now we don't have really an action. We just have a trigger. So we are going to see that if I enter, for example, here, hi, nothing is really going to happen. It's just going to tell us like, Hey, this is the node was executed successfully. So our trigger take place, but now it needs to have an action. Now, because I want to teach you how to do a personal assistant, I'm going to be selecting one of the coolest automations in here, which is AI agents. So you're going to select what it says AI, and then you're going to select AI agent. So this is pretty cool because this is going to allow us to have this AI agent, which is going to have a LLM as a model for the intelligence. And we are going to see that it consists of three different things. So we are going to have the model, which it can be like, for example, uh, GPT-40 or anything. Then we're going to have the memory because of course it's going to need some memory. And then lastly, the tools, which is where everything is going to expand. And we are going to see how, but Pretty much you can just leave this as a default for now because we press in the plus button next to the chat message, we are gonna see that it's already related to one another, right? So whatever I'm entering on the chat is gonna go as an input in the AI agent. Amazing. So I'm just gonna go back to Canvas and now we see here that we have an AI agent, but is we have this exclamation mark and it's because we are required to provide with the actual intelligence, with an actual LLM. In this case, the LLM, we can choose among many different, as you're seeing here, you can actually run this locally, which I can, I can do another uh, tutorial, another video later on. But for now, we are just gonna go with the simplest one. I created this account for a try just to show you that you are gonna be able to get a hundred free OpenAI credits, which is amazing. So I'm just gonna select the OpenAI chat model, and then you're gonna see here that you will get free OpenAI credits. So, but if you have an API and you want to use your own because here the models are going to be limited you will you will have to do is just select create new credential then you will grab the api key from OpenAI, and then you will bring it here so i'm just going to show you an example how it will look so i will select create new credentials and then you will just have to paste here a bunch of random numbers and letters that you're going to get from OpenAI. once you do that you will just click save and you will connect that account all right so but for now, we're just gonna go with the free API credits that um, NRN give us. And then here, because I want to do this demo pretty fast, I'm just gonna select a uh, for one mini for this case. So let's just go with that one. That was one is also gonna be very fast. And I'm just gonna go back to Canvas. 
Amazing. Now we have an AI agent which actually has an intelligent model behind it because before this is just pretty much like a structure, right? But it does not really, it did not have uh, intelligence. So now when I type in here, for example, hi, this is Alvero. And I, I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it this way. Okay. So I'm just going to press enter and we are probably most likely we will get something like, hi, Alvero, how can I help you today or something like that? So I'm just selecting, um, Almost. So it says, hello, Alvaro, how can I assist you today? As you saw, it kind of loaded in here, which is the trigger. And then the action is for the AI agent to use the OpenAI chat model, which is the 4.1 mini, and give us a response back, right? Which in this case, now we are seeing that, hello, how can I assist you today? This is pretty much the same thing as if you go to ChatGPT and then you just say something that you will have a chatbot conversation. But the problem right now is that if I ask, what is my name? And he says, I'm not sure what your name is based on our conversation so far, but it's weird because I literally just say, hi, this is Alvero. And it's because we don't have memory, right? So the easiest way to just go about memory is just to choose this simple memory. Now you can select if you have, for example, a MongoDB or Postgres, you can select any of these and you will just connect your accounts. But the simplest way for beginners, it will be just going and clicking simple memory. And you don't, it's not require any credentials or anything. You're just going to select. This is already given to you, which is you want to have memory of this session that you are currently having. And it's already have it for you. So that's amazing. You can leave it as a default. And then the default value for how many past conversations in this case is five. If that is not enough, you can just make it um, more for this conversation. But for now, we are just going to leave it into five. So now I'm going to go back and I'm just going to actually say the same thing. Hi, this is Alvero. And we're going to see, okay, hello, Alvero. How can I see you today? Perfect. That's the same thing. And now if I ask, what is my name? What is my name? You're going to see that it's going to go into the simple memory and it's kind of going to load and it's because it's actually going into past conversation. So I'm just going to say, what is my name? And now you're going to see that it says your name is Alvero. How can I help you further? Amazing. Now we have an actual chatbot that has memory. Perfect. Now, the last thing that I want to show is this tool function. So this tool function is going to allow us to connect to different tools, like for example, Slack. Uh, email, Google Docs, Google Drive, and pretty much any other tool. There is like more than 400 tools uh, available. So you're going to search in here. Let's just go with a simple one in this case, which uh, is pretty powerful. So which it will be Gmail. Okay. And I'm going to be showing you how, for example, we can create a draft. So you're going to see that I just selected Gmail. So the first thing that you're going to have to do, of course, is connect your email account. Uh, you're going to go into the tool description. You can just leave it automatically. And then where in the resource in here is the different things that you can do with Gmail. So in here, this is normal emails right? Message, but it can be also labels. It can be drafts or it can be threads. So in this case, I like to test out my automations or AI agents actually doing drafts and the operation, it will be, it's not going to be deleting drafts, right? It's going to be creating, but you can actually delete drafts or you can get more information on the drafts. But in this case, I'm going to be creating a draft. Now for subject, if it's going to be always the same, you can type something manually on these drafts, but most likely you will have many different emails that you want your AI agent to help you with and you want it to be different subjects and you want the AI model kind of to figure out these subjects. So in order to do that, what you will have to do is just click in here and this is going to let the model define this parameter, right? So I'm just going to be selecting in here, defined automatically by the model in the subject. Amazing. Now the email type, it really depends if you want more formatted. I usually like it to just have HTML. For the message, and this is probably the most important part, if you just want always the same message, of course, you can just put it here, but most likely you will want the AI agent to help you and actually have a message that is going to come out on its own. So for this case, I'm just going to also let the model define this parameter. And that will be pretty much all, but I like to give it an extra. In this case, it's gonna, I'm going to be adding an option, which is who are we going to be sending this draft? Because I like to go in my email and if it's good, just click send but I don't want to be putting what, who is this email to. So in this two email, I also gonna let the model define this parameter, okay? Perfect. Now I pretty much have everything set up, right? Now it has, I have intelligent model, and I also have, uh, the AI agent is gonna have access to this specific tool, okay? 
amazing, which is the email. Something that I would recommend is also renaming it because you can have many tools in a row. So one can create a draft, the other can send a, an email. So for this case, we're gonna rename it and we're gonna say draft email. That would be actually simpler. Okay, perfect, so we are gonna rename it, amazing. Now we can create another one and we can rename it create email, right? So our agent knows the different tools. So the last thing that I want to mention is that it's, it's good to give instructions to this AI agent, right? So for this case, because the agent can benefit from you giving it instruction, like, hey, I actually give you access to these tools. You say when the user asks for something, right? In this case, and what you will have to do is just say system message. And right now we have you're a helpful assistant, but you can say you're a helpful email assistant if you want. But something that I would probably write in here is something like you are given access to, we can say something like a um, draft, what was it? It was draft email tool node, right? So we can say tool node, you said, when the user asks to about drafting an email. Okay, perfect. So now we are instructing it and we are even helping. You don't really have to do this. I have done it without it and it is still worse, but you want to be more reliable, probably if I will probably use it. Okay, so I'm just gonna go back to Canvas and now what I'm gonna be saying is to draft an email for me. But I want to make sure that it's actually gonna draft it and I want to show you how well it's gonna draft it. So you're, gonna, you're seeing here that there is no drafts, emails, okay? So what I'm gonna say now is draft an email to, and then we can say Alvero at the rundown.ai saying if we are still on for Tuesday's meeting. Hopefully now you're gonna see that this is gonna trigger the chat message, it's gonna go first into the memory and the LLM models, right? And then it's gonna go into the draft email node, it's gonna draft the email, and we're gonna see it in our actual email, and then it's gonna go back into the chat model to tell us, hey, I already have draft this email. So I'm just gonna hit enter in here, and now we're gonna see that hopefully that it is, it goes into the draft email and is going back, which I have drafted an email to whatever asking if they're still on for Tuesday's meeting. Amazing. Let's actually now check, I'm just gonna check it in here and we're just gonna hit refresh and there it is, we now have the draft, which is Tuesday's meeting confirmation. And it says, hi, Avera, I just wanted to confirm if we are still on. And we see that the subject, it was decided uh, by the AI agent. Also, we have who is sending it to by the AI agent. And lastly, we just have the actual message. Now, of course, you can then in the system instructions say something like, hey, um, we always want to sign off this way or we want to draft the emails in a specific way. So you can give more customizations or this was just a pretty simple customization, but this was kind of covering the basics of how to create your assistants. I really like to have a mix of emails with calendars. So that was another one that I really like to involve in here, uh, which is with the calendar. And instead of, uh, so I can just hit, uh, I'm just gonna go back, he's probably gonna give me this. But something that I also like to do is to instead of having it here, I have a Telegram bot, which is much easier. And once everything is test out and you like it, you would just have to click in here to enable the, the actual workflow. So it takes place every single time. Anyway, that concludes this video. Hopefully it was helpful and I will see you in the next one.